Hi, this is Derek the Nitwit. Happy Sunday, everyone. If this is your first time here, thanks for dropping in. And if you are a one of my wonderful subscribers, thanks for checking this video out and coming back. Hi, this is Derek the Nitwit, and happy Sunday to everyone. If you are new here, thanks for checking in. And if you are one of my wonderful subscribers, thanks for coming back. So, yesterday was my trip home from Cozumel. The first flight from Cozumel to Houston was, it was pretty it was pretty fun. I had the entire back half of the plane to myself. I had this thing where it's it started as a joke, but someone told me one time that planes just don't back into mountains. So I've always left my own devices. We'll pick the absolute last available um, window seat. And I like window seats as opposed to aisle seats just because I like to look out the window, whatnot. I don't know. Anyway, um, so I had the entire back half. I mean, there were like six or seven rows of empty between me and the next person. And so it was cool. We had a little bit of turbulence. Uh, I thought it was kind of fun. It wasn't anything horrible. They did, you know, of course, you know, the pilot knew it was coming up. And so he had the uh, flight attendants. You know, go ahead and buckle. You know, we did the a super quick. Um, what do they call that when you know they're handing out the drinks and the the snacks? I'm not sure they have a word for it. I can't remember what it is. But anyway, they made sure that everything was done quick enough so that for like they were expecting the turbulence in like the last half hour of the flight. So that everything they just wanted the, the flight attendants to be able to be uh, sitting down and strapped in before the turbulence hit. And the turbulence wasn't that bad. I mean, I was, you know, wobbling about that much. You know, I was still able to crochet with my plastic yarn needle. Um, I'll talk about that here in a minute. Um, to me, it was like a roller coaster. It was, it was a very mild roller coaster. Okay. So, you know, I had a little bit of fun. It was the first time I ever experiencing anything, any turbulence that was anything more than just a simple jolt. But as far as the crocheting with the yarn hook, okay, when I flew from Oklahoma City to Cozumel, United Airlines, TSA, you know, TSA in the U.S. didn't care if we had a, a crochet needle or crochet hook. I didn't try with the, uh, taking my knitting needles on board. These are the ones that I took to, uh, that I took to Mexico. I wasn't going to push my luck by trying to take these online. I put these in my check baggage. Actually, these aren't even the ones, but the ones I did take were this long. So I wasn't going to push my luck on that. So no problem is getting my crochet hooks down there. Coming back, TSA or whatever in Cozumel, United didn't have a problem with it. It was the it was Cozumel Airport that had a problem with the crochet hooks. And they pulled me over and showed me the um, the little display case of everything that you couldn't take on the plane which included plastic crochet hooks and metal ones and knitting needles and everything, but the little plastic um, darning needle that I have, a yarn needle. So I'm sitting on this flight that's two and a half, three hours, something like that, bored. Then I remembered I still have my plastic needle, so I took it and I took the tip and just bent it barely so that it angled about like that and managed to finish crocheting um, I put it to holder and get a decent amount started on the next one, you know, by the time that the plane landed. And the thing was, there was a flight attendant that it was her very last flight. She was retiring to start her own, like, kitchen garden type business. But she's on Ravelry. And um, she gave me her name, so I kind of I sought her out on there. I don't want to post her name here just because I don't know if that's going to get her in trouble or anything. I um, I did send her a message on Ravelry so that, you know, if she sees this, then, you know, if she finds me or whatnot, you know, lets me know I can post the name, you know, I'll tell you about it later. But anyway, um, I, you know, gave her a pony, you know, one of my ponytail holders, but she was laughing because she's like, you know, my little plastic knitting needle that were, you know, this style. But I just bent the tip on one of them. But it worked. Sorry, I have to pick up the yarn before the cats get to it and decide that all yarn is toys. Um, so that was the first flight. So simple, fun. I felt like royalty to be back there alone. 
you know, like I was off sequestered to keep everyone away from me. It was cool. And Felicia's grandeur, I guess. I don't know. Going through customs was easy. The first, last year coming back, we had to go off, me and Max coming back from Cosmo had to go off to some little special thing to clear customs because bringing an animal back into the country. Didn't have to do that this time. I couldn't just do the, the simple screen, like screening. You go to Houston to go through customs and there's a little kiosk that you go to and, you know, you scan your passport, answer these questions. Have you been to, sorry, my alarm's going off. You know, have you been to a farm or are you smuggling drugs? You know, whatever all those questions are. And then it prints out this little receipt. And generally, you get the receipt, you go up to another one, he looks at it, looks at your passport, you go on. Well, because I had little miss with me, I had to go to another line that was ever so slightly longer, where I went up to a customs officer who looked at my passport, looked at the receipt, and asked me why I was in his line. I said, because I had a cat, and they told me to come over here, and he's like, he just kind of waved me on, so that was it. Um, TSA didn't actually search my bags like they did last year. It was like, last year, which is, there was a special room where they x-rayed my bags again, then they opened them, and you know, uh, actually, I don't think they opened them there, but they did have to scan, you know, extra scanning and whatnot. They didn't have that this time. So either the whole policy's changed or I just looked out and didn't get the in-depth stuff. But I made it through customs and it took me longer to get through the customs line than it did to get through the TSA line. The TSA line was at a long line, but it moved really fast. And it actually took me longer to check my luggage in at United at Cozumel than it did to get through TSA in both Cozumel and Houston Command. So TSA did was either did they're either really on the ball or I just lucked out or both. But second flight, there's a lot more people, but the seats were roomier, so you know I still didn't feel cramped, even though I was in economy. And minimal turbulence, about like the normal stuff. There were there was some concern about it, but pretty much once you got out of Houston we were out of the, the bad weather area, and it was clear the whole rest of the way. And I just sat there and worked on ponytail holders and chatted to the kid sitting next to me. He had just graduated from Marine Corps boot camp the day before and was going home for his 10 days of leave before whatever the next thing that they do. So probably one of the politest kids that I've met in a long time. So, And then when I get to the airport... Simple enough, get out, the, you know, get out of the airport and, you know, get your luggage and, you know, all this other stuff. And it's, uh, get out to where I always go to pick my sister up for United Flights. It's the only place I know to go to pick up passengers is you, we're this one little area. And I'm waiting for David and he's messaging me, he's like, are you inside or are you outside? And I'm like telling him where I am and describing the things around him and sitting in pictures and whatnot and Come to find out, there is a whole huge, like, I only know, like, 5% of the airport, apparently, and in my city. Very, because he's like, well, you know, we're, go to the tunnel. I'm like, what tunnel? And apparently there are signs that actually direct you to, I've never heard of the tunnel. And I was like, okay, I'm by baggage claim for United. I'm like, all these pictures, you know, we're back and forth, can't find it. He finally finds me. He'd park, because I'm where part, you know, you can just, there's an upper level and a lower level arrivals and um, pick or you know arrivals pickup i didn't know that i just did the one i've only ever paid attention to the one um and so he finally he actually ended up having to park walk through the airport to find me and then we go back to his car so david i'm sorry i had no clue but i only fly i mean like it's maybe once a year so I know now that there's a tunnel, although I, at this point, I could, I've slept since then. I couldn't tell you how to get back to the tunnel. But I do know that there is a tunnel, and I know how to ask for someone for where the tunnel is. So, last night, Little Miss, she made it like 10 hours in the carrier. No accidents, did fine. I mean, I'm sure she was sick of it by the time it was done, but she did, she did really well. She travels well, just like Max traveled well when he did the year before. So we get, David picks me up, and he's, he was so nice. He was awesome. He had loaded all of my stuff, except for Max, in the car, so that when he picked me up, all we had to do was go get Max and bring him out. And Little Miss, we go to David's house, 
pick up Max and for me to give them the t-shirts and the, the magnets that I got them. And Little Miss is very much, ever since being spayed, any little bit of socialization that I had done with her, with the exception of, like, she still likes my therapist. She tolerates my therapist, but my therapist gives her treats every time. But anything outside of her little bubble, she doesn't like anymore. Like, she was making progress where she was getting used to other animals and getting used to other people and was doing fine since getting spayed. Nope, not happening. Hopefully when... I go house it for David next week, or not next week, next month. She'll get used to other cats, and or she'll have to get used to other cats because David has cats. But anyway, the whole thing is, we get over there, and I left her in the carrier. And just set her down because I was going to, you know, give them their souvenirs, and I was going to get, um, of course, you know, get Max and whatnot. And she is just hissing. I mean, she sounds like some like a slow leak out of a tire. She just won't stop hissing. So, poor little girl. But anyway, David and Chuck liked their shirts and like Magnet. And so, we get David, we get Max, get in the car. Because I was going to, David was going to give me a little bit of, cat, of kitty litter because my shipment did, wasn't scheduled to arrive until today. Because I will make the Amazon driver carry that instead of me having to carry it on a bus. Let them deliver it to me. Same, it's cheaper through Amazon anyway. And we get halfway home. From David's house to my house, which is all of like three miles, maybe. Anyway, realize I forgot to get kitty litter from David's. So we get home, we drop the cats off, we sit the cats in the bathroom, unload the car, and um, run out to Walmart, to you know the neighborhood Walmart. Like you know, I don't know if y'all have neighborhood WalMarts where you are. They are basically the food section of Walmart. And, you know, just the food and, like, pharmacy section of Walmart. But it's not even, like, the produce section isn't even as good. But it's a neighborhood market. It's better than going to a convenient, to, like, a gas station to buy your food. It's not too bad. And it's the same price as what a normal Walmart would be. It's just not as big of a selection. But anyway, picked up a bottle of soda and some kitty litter. Make it home. By the time we get home, Little Miss and Max have... Her little miss has remembered that she likes Max, and they're getting along fine. So, got them, you know, the litter put the litter box, let them both go at it, and I think little miss didn't come out of that litter box for like a good 15 minutes. She had to go. So, and today, so after that, I got home last night, all I really wanted to do was put on some pajama pants and go to bed. So, didn't get a whole lot done, just, I mean, like, I... Emptied out Chuck's and David's, you know, suitcase so they could have it back. And I didn't even neatly dump it out. I just dumped it out because I just, you know, I was tired and didn't realize how tired I was until I got back to the house. So, got up this morning, had my first hot shower in 10 days. Now, um, I had access to hot water. I could have had access to hot water in Cozumel. The thing is, they don't keep, excuse me, they at least in the, the apartment complex that my sister stays in, they don't keep the hot water going constantly because they each buy individual bottles of gas. Kind of like the little bottles you get at the gas stations, you know, for your propane gill or grill or whatnot. So if you want a hot shower down there, you go, you, you flip the, there's a little switch you flip, and it turns on the hot, the hot water heater. And I don't know if you have to go, I don't, don't think I have to go turn that, the gas bottle on maybe it i don't know all i know is i said i flipped the switch wait 15 20 minutes take a shower and then remember to turn the, the flip the switch again and the waiting wouldn't be that big of a deal because i mean seriously i can easily kill 15 minutes playing a game on my phone the problem would be remembering to turn it off so i don't waste an entire bottle of gas it's hot outside the water is not that cold. You know, you're not, I'm not spinning forever in the shower anyway. Just take a cold shower. Be done with it. I don't mind cold showers, you know. I even, as cold as it can get at, in Oklahoma during the winter, I will finish every all my hot showers with, you know, a couple seconds of ice cold. Because it's just like the juxtaposition between super hot shower and super cold water feels so good. It's like I love... Drinking a cup of hot coffee or hot cocoa 
and then followed it up with a cup of iced water. Don't know why. It's always good. So, got my first hot shower this morning. Got dressed. Like that Yeah, because, you know, thankfully, my stuff is not running around naked everywhere because I don't want to go to jail. Anyway, I unpacked everything except the yarn. The yarn, if you can see right here, is still in the suitcase. Go back in bags. Everything. Because I am going to be doing a kind of a yarn haul video with Drew. We originally were going to do it today. Drew got a little tired. We had a little bit of excitement. We'll get to that in a minute. Um, so, that is sitting there, but all my clothes, my dirty clothes, what little bit of dirty clothes I had left, it's in the laundry, the hamper, whatnot. All my new shirts, whatnot that I have is hung up. Everything is put up, just except for that little yarn, and it's still sitting in the suitcase in the middle. Drew's supposed to be coming tomorrow after class, and we'll do the video. So, and then I have finally turned the heat on. It's currently, it's 41 degrees outside. It's supposed to get to like the... Third, low 30s overnight. Looking at the weather forecast, it's going to be back into the 50s on by Thursday. My heat will probably be back off by Thursday. And honestly, the only reason my heat is actually on now is because I thought Drew was coming over this evening when I turned on. I have a it's 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 a wall furnace type thing, um, and it does okay. I've not really needed it. My two you know the, I share walls with two neighbors. And they both have their furnaces set on like hell or something because plenty of heat radiates in. So I haven't needed it. I like to sleep. I like to be a little bit cold because if I start sweating, I'm not happy. And at night, I love to be cold outside of my bed and then me snuggled up under my heating blanket, my heat, uh, my heating blanket on like hot. So, but anyway, we went today is Sunday, so we had the yarn group in Norman, and I got to go to it. I don't get to go to it very often just because I don't have a car, and so a lot of times my schedule and your schedule doesn't meet up, match up well enough for us to be able to go, but it did today, so I was excited I got to go. I worked on this blanket, which I'm referring to as the Tinkerbell blanket because I cannot work at it, work on it without having to tink, and at least today, I only had to tink like three-fourths of a row. Usually, I will be... You know, it'll take me forever to get a row done without messing up. And I and I think what it, the problem with why I have to think so much is because I don't work on it often enough. Because the longer I work on it in one session or in a series of days, the less I have to go back and, and unravel things. So, you know, plus, you know, when you're in group, you're kind of, you're chatting with other people. And it's lots, you know, a lot of times you may, you know, miss a count. Because, you know, some like one row, I'm knitting five and purling three. The next row, I'm purling three or um, knitting three and purling five. And it's because of the pattern, I will revert, a lot of times revert back to the previous row. But we're doing good. I'm going to at least finish the skein that I'm on, which is this much. And again, that's the Burnett Maker Home Deck. I like it because it's a jersey material. And um, I will reevaluate. When I get close to the end of that pattern, I'm going to reevaluate the size of it. Um, or close to the end of that scan. I'm going to reevaluate the size when I'm, I end it because it's a 16 row repeat. So I want to finish it at the end of a 16th row. And let's see, it says we end on. Are you in on a 7th or a 15th row? So, when I get close to the end of that skein, I will look, in, and I hit a 7 or a 15, then I'll look at, okay, is this long enough that I want? Because it doesn't have to be that wide, because I sleep on my couch. Because I don't have a bedroom, so therefore I don't have a bed, I sleep on the couch. So, it, it needs to be long, it just doesn't need to be wide. So, we worked on that. I worked on, my other whip that I've worked on today is... The anatomical heart, I stuffed it, finished it, closed it off. All I have left to do is the veins. You know, I I did the superior vena cava already, but I went back and looked at the instructions, and I think I messed it up. So I will end up, you know, frogging that, because I'm pretty sure I missed a good chunk of it. veers off to the side or something. But I've got the inferior vena cava done. 
So we've discussed, look, I do the superior vena cava, the aorta, pulmonary artery, pulmonary veins, and then assemble it. And then I'm going to serve it in a mason jar. Oh, as I trip over my yarn. See, this is for my doctor, and the doctor's appointment is on Wednesday. So I have to have it done by Wednesday, by Wednesday morning for so What I'm going to do is I have this heart. Now, right now, it's got glow-in-the-dark beads that where it's sitting, they don't get much light. I'm going to move them somewhere else, but I'm going to take and just put the heart in the, in the jar. My doctor is Dean at um, School of Medicine or Provost or something. I can't remember. So, but he has an office over there, and you know, we, you know, I think he thinks even if, you know, even if he just left it in the medical office where he sees patients, he, you know, he still thinks it's funny. And I know his nurse would would find it funny. So, yeah. So that is what I've been up to for the most part. So I know we are 20 minutes into the video, but we're gonna have a quick little story time, and this is story time, near death edition. So over at, after we have our yarn group thing this evening, and Drew's parents, you know, invited me over to dinner. So I'm like, okay, cool. You know, spend time with Drew. I haven't seen him in, you know, a couple months. Be fun. So we're over there, and I, and I like his parents. So we're over there, we're talking, we're talking about my vacation, you know, and they've been to Cosmo before and everything, so it was just cool. And dinner was good. It was pork chops and mashed potatoes and green beans and salad. And... So we're doing good, everything. Okay, now here's a little thing that I don't think y'all know about me. I have this very slight amount of dysphagia, which means sometimes I have problems swallowing. Generally, what I have problems swallowing is dry foods. Dry mashed potatoes and bread, cupcakes, you know, baked goods, stuff like that. Now, it's not ever been... It's stressful slightly. If I just remember not to panic, I realize I can breathe around it. Take a couple breaths, can either cough it out, or I can get a drink, take a drink, wash it down. Not that big of a deal. I've I've learned how to live with it. We don't know what causes what caused the um the, the dysphagia. And what it feels like is like you get to the back of my mouth, back of my throat, and I just can't turn the corner to go down. And so it just stays. And I have a lot of things wrong with me that the, the cause, it always becomes idiopathic, meaning they don't have no clue why. I have a lot of neuro issues, minor neuro issues, you know, type of stuff that we figured the dysphagia is just related to that. So anyway, so we're sitting there talking and I remember that they had just asked me where I stayed in Cozumel. Like what hotel or you know where we were sing, and I was getting ready to answer it, and but I had food in my mouth, and so I went to swallow it, and it got stuck. It was a piece of pork chop got stuck. Now this pork chop is the tenderest pork chop I have had in my life, because I'm used to you know. I've never had tender pork chop. It's always been somewhere a slightly t slightly more tender than, you know. A, the frisbee used for disc golf. I've I've not ever been a pork chop fan because of that, and because I don't like meat on bones. But that's a whole different thing. This week, but this pork chop wasn't on bone. So, anyway, so I go to swallow, and it wasn't even really that big of a piece. At least it didn't feel like it. It got stuck, and so my first thought was I'm sitting there just kind of you know trying to breathe in around it, and it's a little bit tighter than normal. And I'm still thinking, okay, this is, you know, um, you know, th this is, this is, we've been in this position before. We can handle this. Just don't panic, breathe around it, whatnot. And I go to take a drink of water because that's generally the way to get it down. Take a little drink of water, gets it to go. Speaking of taking a drink. And so I'm sitting there, this piece of meat. 99% blocking my air. Mouthful of water. Not a mouthful of water, but mouthful of water. You know. Think, okay, swallow. My throat doesn't move. Like, can't. Like, I'm thinking swallow, trying to swallow, and it just, my body doesn't swallow. And so that kind of got me a little freaked out. But I'm like, and when I finally did get to swallow, 
it was more that have you ever swallowed and laughed at the same time and so you kind of choke and you spew whatever is in your mouth that's what it did except i wasn't laughing so that's the point where they kind of figure out something's going on and and i have stood up i'm still not panicking i'm not flailing i'm one trying not to eventually spew onto their dining room table whatnot and i'm i'm trying to cough and i can get the barest thin thread of air around this meat and i'm not quite panicking yet but i'm thinking this is the worst it's been and i get these itty bitty baby coughs it's like <clears throat> that's about as forceful as i could cough and i'm trying and it's not doing it and i'm trying to breathe in and it's uh, you know very little and so you know and i'm I don't know what it looked like to them, but to me, it felt like I was in a damn good job at not panicking. And, and Drew finally looks at me and he goes, do you need the Heimlich? And I, I just nod. Cause yeah, because I mean, he's he just did, he's going to school for CNA, uh, be a nurse, uh, nurse's aide or nursing assistant. I'm not sure which the terminology changes every now and then. But anyway, he's going to school for that, and they had just done the BLS, the, the basic life-saving life -saving skills. Now, the last time I went through BLS, and maybe this was because I worked, well, he worked in healthcare too, they were moving away from the Heimlich, and they were going to mainly, you know, like, back blows and chest thrusts. Kind of like what you do for a baby, but they were doing it for adults, all the way up to adults. So, but anyway, let me tell you what, if you've never had to do the Heimlich on someone, y'all need to practice, because it was not in the right spot i mean you know it's hard to find the right spot especially if someone's got some extra padding on them and i mean he was pushing wherever he was pushing was not the right spot because i remember i was moving his hand to get it to where it needed to go because it was just he was pushing and it just it wasn't doing anything and his mom was like do i need to call 911 and i nod on that one and so she's trying to call 911 and my thought is there's no way they can get there in time these paramedics are going to come, and I'm going to be passed out. And oh my God, you know what's it going to do? What's it going to do to their homeowner's insurance if someone dies in their house? Um, you think crazy shit, you know? But so I'm thinking at the, that I'm going. I just finally I kind of step away from Drew, and I'm thinking, okay, well I'm going to turn around. They've got hardback wooden chairs, and I'm going to chest thrust myself on the chair. And I'm starting to breathe a little bit, so he's it's he's moving it just enough that I can get more air. But it's like, Ugh, you know, it's horrible sounds. It has to be horrible sounds because it feels horrible, and it probably wasn't as loud as it felt like it was. But I was enough that I could actually get in and get a decent cough that I was able to actually move that piece of meat and. Oh my God, I think it was only got stuck just because his mom is such a good cook that the pork chop was tender. But the whole time, and then the whole time when his mom's trying to call, um, call 911, her phone keeps dropping. And they end up, they have the same thing, they texted her. And of course, by that point, I'm breathing, I'm, I'm breathing, throat's clear breathing, I'm sitting down, I'm lightheaded, horribly embarrassed. But I'm breathing, and I'm like, okay, we don't, you know, we're, we're good now. We don't need, you can tell them they don't have to come. And, you know, his, and Drew's dad, his, his dad, his poor dad, can, the only thing his dad can do is sit there and watch. Because his dad had just had knee replacement. Like, last week? This week? Last week? Whatever it was. He can't get up. He can't do anything. This poor guy has no choice but to sit there and watch me choke to death in his house. So... But as far as I can tell, from what it looked like on my end, everybody stayed calm. Um, I'm sure that nobody felt calm, but nobody freaked out. So Drew is going to do well, the CNA, because he's already faced a medical emergency. He saved a life. Um, and he'll be fine. And his mom stayed cool-headed. And his dad stayed cool-headed, and then we got down, you know, the crisis was over. We sat down, we finished dinner. I made sure to cut my meat into very itty bitty tiny pieces. I will probably never in my life eat a pork chop again. Um, 
I mean, you know, sometimes I don't, there's a, you know, if I'm going to choke on meat, that's usually not the meat I'm choking on. But, you know, all at the end of the day, I'm happy that Drew was there and that he was able to take care of things. Um, you know, I'm fine. My throat was a little bit irritated for a while afterwards. It's fine now. I mean, I don't even have a sore throat. I may have um, abdominal, or like I may have a little bit of bruising because sometimes I bruise easily and whatnot. But, um, you know, I'm fine. I, I'm not worried about, you know, do I need to go to the ER and get checked out because I choked? You know, I didn't, it wasn't like a near drowning thing where that could be disastrous if you don't go to the hospital. I'm fine, and when I see my doctor on Wednesday, I will definitely make sure to let him know, like, hey, dude, I'm still having this occasional dysphagia, and, you know, to the point that we've had, you know, we had to do the Heimlich on Wednesday, and, um, you know, but other than that, it's not like it's really progressed anymore, it's just, it's, it's just a steady thing, it's just a part of my life, and, you know, but... I just still think it was weird that the whole time I'm thinking the paramedics aren't going to make it here in time. Why bother calling them? And then thinking, what's it going to do to their homeowner's insurance? But, you know, they don't have to worry because their homeowner's insurance isn't going to go up because I didn't die in the house. So anyway, little miss, are you happy to be home? You happy? Anyway, this video has been going on for about 32 minutes now. And I know you guys only, you know, my statistics would not on that say that people tend to only watch like the first half of it. But you know what? If you want to hear but you know. Anyway, I'm rambling at this point and I'm ready to go to bed. So I will see you guys again tomorrow.